My name is Stella Wulopulu. I'm here today with Dr. Sharos Rana, an expert on women's health and high-risk pregnancies. Dr. Rana is a professor of obstetrics and gynecology and section chief of maternal fetal medicine at the University of Chicago. Dr. Rana presented at Hypertension 2020 a talk entitled Long-Term Cardiovascular Disease Risk in Women After Hypertensive Disorders of Pregnancy. So I'm thrilled to be here with Dr. Rana and learn more about the impact of your work. So Dr. Rana, can you please tell us what are the key points of your talk at Hypertension 2020? Yeah, so I am an obstetrician, like you mentioned, and I take care of a lot of women who have high blood pressures in pregnancy. So preeclampsia is one of the common high blood pressure conditions, but other things such as chronic hypertension is also quite prevalent in women who get pregnant. And what we found, and this is not just our data, but I summarized saying that um, women who suffer from high blood pressures in pregnancy, so whether it's chronic hypertension or preeclampsia, have a very high risk to have long-term cardiovascular disease. So, so that data was known from the past that women like maybe 10 years out, 20 years out, will then have chronic hypertension or they develop cardiovascular diseases, even stroke and, and heart failure. What we now know though, is not, it's not just the long-term cardiovascular dysfunction, but also short-term cardiovascular dysfunction. So women who have preeclampsia or high blood pressures will actually have a very high chance that they will have residual postpartum hypertension, or they will get readmitted with things such as heart failure. Um, and the risk is actually quite high and it's disproportionately high in African-American patients. So that's kind of the gist of what I'm presenting in the uh, 2020 session. So Dr. Rana, we have, um, I have heard uh, um, recently more about postpartum uh, high blood pressure and uh, preeclampsia. Can you talk to us a little bit about that and how it may change the risk for future cardiovascular disease? So there are two types of kind of postpartum hypertension. Um, one, among women who already have hypertension in pregnancy, so you could have preeclampsia, chronic hypertension, and then you sustain, you kind of maintain your blood pressures high after pregnancy and delivery. And that's called a kind of persistent postpartum hypertension. So we're hypertensive before delivery and you're hypertensive after delivery. That's the more common type. And based on what kind of patient population you're looking at. So in Boston, I did a study, the rates of persistent postpartum hypertension is about 50%. Here at the University of Chicago, I see a lot of African-American patients who are obese and other risk factors. So the rates of like actually persistent postpartum hypertension here is about 90%. So nine out of 10 women who have, will have preeclampsia or high blood pressure before delivery will have some sort of persistent hypertension after delivery. Now that's one kind. The other kind is actually de novo postpartum hypertension. So this is a group of women who will never have high blood pressures before delivery, but then suddenly will develop high blood pressure after delivery. Um, that's not very common, it's about 10%, but yes, there's an entity, patients can even have postpartum eclampsia, so they can have seizures, they can have heart failure, they can have developed cardiomyopathy only in the postpartum period. So do we know at all if there is any way that we can alleviate this risk? Because it seems that cardiovascular disease is the number one killer for women mm -hmm. and uh, pregnancy complications contribute to that. What we can do? So there are various things that people propose. So one thing just scientifically, it's known that there are no real biomarkers. So we are working on some of the biomarkers and I talk about that in our talk too, but there are no real biomarkers in terms of how can you predict the women who are gonna have either persistent hypertension or who are gonna have cardiac dysfunction, for example, in the postpartum period. Short of that, ACOG actually a couple of years ago and CDC now, there's a big push for for um, actually CDC in 2019, just in terms of maternal death, they found that about two thirds of deaths are actually happening in the postpartum period. So while you're all so much focused in the antepartum period and why patients are pregnant, a lot of actually morbidity and mortality lies in the postpartum period. So American College of OPGYN and AHA, and I have that in my talk too, they suggest have yearly follow-up of these patients. We need to maintain their BMI, reduce their cholesterol, so kind of have DASH diets, so things such as which are like kind of um, working in non-pregnant patient population, kind of, you know, put them back into the patients who, who had a history of preeclampsia and kind of, you know, use the same uh, risk modification in these patients. Um, so there are like no trials for any specific uh, 
therapy you could think of like aspirin or uh, even like what is the adequate blood pressure in a postpartum state in a young patient all those kind of things are not really uh, known and obviously needs to be studied in this patient population and can you single out one factor that contributes to that increase in um, pregnancy complication, subsequent cardiovascular risk? Can we say that if a woman has X, for sure she's going to have pregnancy complications and then later cardiovascular disease? There are a multitude of risk factors. Um, and I think some of the traditional risk factors, such as presence of chronic hypertension, your BMI. So, you know, some of people believe that there's a chronic inflammatory state in these women and that they enter the pregnancy, which is a stress. So kind of during pregnancy, you'll develop preeclampsia and then after pregnancy, you kind of get better, but then you're at risk to develop cardiovascular disease. The other kind of prevalent hypothesis is that it's not so much as what your risk was before you got pregnant, but preeclampsia, for example, itself, because you release so many toxic factors, which are toxic to the heart, then predisposes you to have uh, cardiovascular disease. So certainly if you look at like risk factors, obviously um, African-American race plays into it, your BMI, history of diabetes and hypertension, but preeclampsia itself, so with none of these, preeclampsia itself, so preterm preeclampsia, if you deliver early in your pregnancy with severe kind of preeclampsia, predisposes to about like twofold increased risk to develop any kind of uh, cardiovascular dysfunction later in life. And also I want to put in a plug, it's not just the preeclampsia, but there are actually studies done even with preterm delivery, so unrelated to preeclampsia, because again, there's some sort of inflammation going on and pregnancy just gives you this window. So you have an adverse pregnancy outcome and then postpartum, you have all these complications. So as we're closing, can you tell us what you're currently working on and what is the next team, uh, the next step of your team? So... Two things. One is that I just want to kind of put it out there that the knowledge among clinicians, and that's why thank you for inviting me to give this talk in AHA, the so knowledge among cardiologists and general practitioners about this link between obstetrical complications and women's health postpartum is actually very, the knowledge is very poor. I did a study whereby like a majority of internists did not know and did not ask the patient's history AHA very recently added preeclampsia as a risk factor. So for just people to know um, that this is a major risk factor. So I, I do a lot of education around this concept. So I think that's like one of the things. Um, and then the second thing, we are actually trying to figure out how we can perhaps predict by some echo findings or even biomarkers, some of these complications postpartum. Dr. Rana, thank you so much for the great work you do and um, for the impact that this may have in the future for women's health. Thank you very much for having me.